Welcome to Prophylactic mRNA Vaccines. Now that we've learned about the attributes of mRNAs that make them suitable as medicines and all of the challenges that had to be overcome to realize this potential, we're finally ready to dig into the types of disorders that mRNA medicines can either prevent or treat. Please take a moment to review the learning objectives for this lesson. First, let's talk about vaccines, specifically vaccines meant to prevent disease. This type of vaccine is known as a prophylactic vaccine. We'll start here because the very first mRNA medicines to be approved and widely administered were the mRNA vaccines against SARS-CoV-2. Until very recently, the traditional method of vaccination was to expose the recipient to a small amount of a pathogen that's been inactivated, or an active but weakened, that is, attenuated pathogen. Pathogens may be viruses or bacteria. The polio and typhus vaccines are good examples of inactivated pathogen vaccines, while the MMR vaccine, measles, mumps, and rubella, is an example of an attenuated pathogen vaccine. The safety of an inactivated pathogen vaccine depends on the pathogen being thoroughly inactivated or killed prior to administration. If the pathogen is not completely killed, the vaccine can actually cause disease. In an infamous case in 1955 known as the Cutter Incident, Cutter Laboratories released a batch of polio virus that they had failed to completely inactivate. When it was used for vaccination, it caused more than 40,000 cases of polio, lifelong paralysis for 200 people, and 10 deaths. Similarly, patients with weakened immune systems or who take an immunosuppressant because they've had an organ transplant are often advised against taking attenuated pathogen vaccines. This is because their weaker immune systems may not be able to control any type of infection, even by a weakened pathogen. The way all vaccines work is to expose our immune systems to a new infectious agent in a relatively safe way so that we can develop an adaptive immune response. The first step in building an immune response involves specialized white blood cells called antigen-presenting cells, or APCs. Their job is to constantly be on the lookout for anything unusual, ingest potential pathogens, and display proteins or fragments of proteins from it on their own cell surface. The proteins or bits of protein they display are called antigens, gen for generate and anti for against. Therefore, an antigen is something that generates an immune response against a pathogen. Antigen-presenting cells travel back and forth between the tissues they patrol and nearby draining lymph nodes. When they arrive in a lymph node, APCs present any antigens they've picked up on patrol to immature B and T cells. If one of these B or T cells is able to recognize a presented antigen, it will develop into a mature B or T cell. Mature B cells secrete proteins called antibodies that can bind to and neutralize the pathogen. Cytotoxic T cells, on the other hand, seek out the source of the infection and eliminate any infected cells before they can be exploited to produce more of the pathogen. mRNA vaccines work in a similar but different way. With traditional vaccines, APCs ingest the entire pathogen. With mRNA vaccines, the pathogen is replaced by LMPs. The APCs ingest the LMPs carrying mRNA instructions for how to manufacture one or more pathogen proteins, then use their own ribosomes to make those proteins for surface display. Previously, we learned that mRNA is inherently transient. So once it's inside the antigen-presenting cells, it lasts just a short time. In animal studies, mRNAs formulated with the same LMP used for Moderna's SARS-CoV-2 vaccine were undetectable after just three days. Similarly, the antigenic proteins are only present for a limited time as well. 
Although a single exposure to a strong antigen can be sufficient to generate an initial adaptive immune response, a second and even third exposure often results in stronger and more durable responses. Like most traditional vaccines, optimal protection from an mRNA vaccine requires both a first or prime dose and one or more subsequent booster doses given weeks to months later. In the next lesson, we'll learn more about some special features of mRNA vaccines.